Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo. In this video I'll be going over setting up OBS and covering the settings. So if you're new to OBS, this will get you up and streaming with ease. As an extra, I'll be leaving some suggestions and tips at the end that will up your OBS game. So before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. We're going to start with the very basics and work our way up. So if it's your first time using OBS, I'll be covering every step from downloading and installing OBS, configuring the settings, setting up your first scene, adding cameras and mic. So let's get started. First, we want to head over to obsprojects.com and download OBS. So for this, you can just go to Google and search for OBS or you can head over to obsprojects.com without an S, obsproject.com. Once this here loads up, all we want to do is click the one here that corresponds with our operating system. So if you're running Windows, click Windows. If you're running a Mac, use the Mac. And same for Linux. If you're running Linux, click the Linux. First thing you click, the operating system that you're running, it should automatically start downloading here. It will also give you some run-throughs and startup guides that should help you. If you need any extra information, definitely check out these things that it brings up here. But for now, we're just going to leave this here closed. Now is a good time to ask yourself, do I want powerful chat commands and overlays that are very easy to set up? If this is something that you want, I suggest checking out stream elements for your chat commands and your overlay needs. After we install OBS, we will connect the stream elements bot to our chat. I mention this now because there's a plugin for stream elements that goes well with OBS, but I will just be covering the basics in this video. And I do have a video covering installing and setting up OBS stream elements version, the OBS.live plugin with OBS. And if you would like to check it out, I'll definitely leave a, a link in the description below. After it's downloaded, we're just going to go down here and click on it to get the install process started. And it's just going to install like any other application. Just click on it to get it started. It should load up and ask you to install. Okay, I'm just going to click yes to the installer. Now it's just going to go through some things. We want to click next. Yes, click next. Okay, now at this here window, I want you to definitely make sure that you install it in the default location, please. As this makes it so much easier to help fix problems. And if you install it somewhere else, it's so much harder to troubleshoot the issues. So make sure you leave it in the default location. If space is an issue, still install OBS to your main operating drive. Make sure it's on your main drive so you do not have any issues with it. And we can change where the videos record to later on in the software. So you don't have to necessarily fill up your hard drive with unnecessary stuff. This is a very small file. It's only 353 megabytes. You can definitely sacrifice that little bit of space on your main drive to not have problems when you're installing things later on. Just keep that in mind. So after that, just click install. So we just had to end that in the task manager or restart your computer will fix that problem. If, okay, now that we got that fixed, we just had to click okay and we had to end a process. Our capture card was still being run in the background from our previous installation. So if you do run across that problem, just restart your PC or just end it in task manager, whatever's giving you the problem should be okay. I suggest a restart and then just installing it again. Keep that in mind now that this your last page pops up. It's going to have a check mark on the launch OBS studio and the view readme. Uh, make sure that the view readme is unchecked. Uh, we're pros now, so we don't really need that. <laughs> Just joking. All right, Windows is going to ask you, do you want to allow this here app to make changes to your device? We want to click yes. We're done with this here OBS website. We're just going to close this here down for now. And we're going to go through this here auto configuration process. This should start up first thing you launch OBS, a fresh installation. It should come up with the auto configure. This is just going to ask you a few things. If you want to optimize for streaming, recording is secondary, optimize for recording. I will not be streaming or I will be using this as a virtual camera. We're going to be streaming and recording. So we're going to pick the top one. This should be fine for default. Just pick a top one and click next. This your next window is going to ask you about your video settings. Uh, your base canvas should be what your screen resolution actually is. So if this here looks fine, we're just going to leave this stock for now and we're going to go through the settings and change them later on. So we're just going to click next here. In the auto configuration, this here should ask you to connect account or use a stream key. This is where you want to connect your Twitch account to OBS. If it doesn't give you authentication when you connect the account, it probably won't work and you might have to disconnect your account and reconnect it. But we'll just click on the connect account here and log in with our username and information. After it's authenticated, 
it should show up here with the stream information and ask you the service. It's definitely Twitch, but there is YouTube, Facebook, and other things. We're definitely going to use Twitch. And this here check mark is going to say prefer hardware encoding. Now, this is going to depend on the video card that you have. If you have AMD video card, you want to uncheck that. If you have a NVIDIA, a NVIDIA video card, 1660 or better, you can leave this here checked for hardware encoding. That's what I suggest, but you can definitely test it and see what you like and see what works for you best. We're going to leave this here checked for now because we have a 1660 Ti installed in the system. But if I had a RX 5800, I would have unchecked that and used my CPU for this instead. We're just going to click next. And now it's going to go through an auto configuration test to see what your bandwidth is. This will hopefully set your internet speed, your bit rate, at an appropriate amount that it's not going to hurt your internet. If you have really good internet, it should set you at the max. That is not always the best, depending on how your internet goes through the day. That could go up or down. And if you have spikes through the day, you may not want to set it at the max settings. This here final result, the testing complete. Now, this is what it says your settings are going to be. Your servers automatic recommend it. Your bit rate, 6,000. You got hardware encoded with NVENC new and high quality medium file size. So this looks pretty good to me. And this is the most very basic of settings. And we are definitely going to change the output scale resolution to 720. That's something that we will change later on. We're just going to click apply settings for now. And this is going to show up a couple docs which should show your chat and stream information. When it loads up and once your account's connected, it should definitely show these here two docs. You can just stick these here anywhere you like. So we're just going to jam them in here for now. Now this is good for me. We're just going to click the X. We're going to close it. We're going to click refresh. We're going to right click on top of the OBS studios icons. Go to properties in here. Go to compatibility down here. Make sure run as administrator is checkmarked. Click apply and click OK. You need to have that applied or you're, if you're running a one PC setup, your game's going to take priority over your OBS. So make sure that's clicked or you may have problems and then just relaunch it and you should be great. Now we can just open it up so that we can add a few things. Down here we have scenes and sources. This is where we're going to build how our stream looks. Most have like three scenes like you're starting, your BRB, and like your main gameplay scene. And that is a really good place to start. Even if you just only use your main scene with the gameplay, I think that's perfectly fine. You can add all three and change them as you want later on as you get adapted. For now, we're just going to click on the plus and we're going to add one. We're going to name ours main as it's the one I'm going to use most time. So we're just going to name it main or gameplay. I suggest gameplay or main depending, depending on what your structure, what you'll be able to remember. I'm used to my main scene being named main. And there's two things that I, I want in my main scene. I want my game capture or desktop capture, depending on what one you'll need to do. And I want my webcam. So those are two things that I want to add to my scene. Over here in sources, we can just go down here to the plus button. We'll get started by adding a display capture. Now, I suggest adding a game capture. Depending on what you're running for hardware, it's easier on your computer to just only use the game capture. So if you have a specific game, click game capture load up the game and click on it. For now, we'll start with display capture. We'll click OK. And then we'll just add this one here. This is going to be a little bit of a, a tunneling effect. Sorry about that, guys. We'll make it really small so we don't see it. So we have the display now. And I'll go in here and add a camera. So a camera would be a video capture device. So you'll be able to click it in here and go through. It will load up with some things that are available to you. I have an Avermedia HD capture card. I don't have my webcam plugged into it right now, unfortunately. So it's going to show this just for just temporarily. I'll hook it up here in just a minute. All you have to do is click in here in the devices, find the device that your webcam. We're going to use the capture card. Scroll down here to the settings. I definitely suggest going through these here settings instead of leaving them default. Make sure you put custom. Go down to your screen resolution, change it 1920 by 1080 or down. 720p would be fine here as well. And we'll match the FPS to 60 and then we'll leave everything else stock. That's fine. And we'll click OK. I suggest that so that it's not so heavy on the resources. Like if your capture card's capturing at 120 frames per second, it just might be harder on your computer. And the next thing we're going to do is just grab it by the sides and drag it. You used to have to push shift to keep it square, but you can just drag it to a size where it suits. So we're just going to drag it down like this and we're going to place it right here. That's fine for us. 
Okay, so we have a basic layout of what we're going to do. And I'll go over adding a game capture. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch... We're going to launch our games and we're going to launch some Apex of Legends for this here example. I'll be back in a second. All right, here we go. Now that we're in the lobby, let's alt tab out so that we can see our OBS. Now we don't want to have display capture. We do not want that because that's heavy on resources. So I'm going to show you the other way to add your game and this will help too. So if your game closes, it's not going to show your desktop or if you want your desktop to show, you can just leave this one here on depending on like what I said, what you have for hardware. So we're just going to click in here. And we are going to add game capture. Game capture is going to give you a few options. You can capture any full screen application by just clicking this. So anything that goes full screen will automatically capture. And when you close it, if you have it set up like this, it'll just show a black screen if it closes. We're going to choose specific window. Then we're going to go down here and select the Apex Legends. Once you click OK, this here game should show right up. Perfect. We're going to drag it underneath our webcam so our webcam stays on top so this is the way I would definitely do it and you can leave this here on check like I said depending on your hardware so that if your game closes down it will still show your desktop you might not have this here ugly thing up in the way you might have it like this here so <laughs> it won't look as bad I promise okay so now that that's at it perfect display capture too I forgot to go over this it will have more than one option if you have more than one display just make sure it's capturing the one that you game on not necessarily the one your OBS is on I'm using my other monitor so that I have my notes beside me. So I'm capturing the same monitor and having this here effect happen. You don't have to do that. You can capture the one you game on and have your OBS over on the other side. For now, we're just going to leave both the game capture and the display capture on. When the game closes, it'll show our desktop and not a black screen. But if you want to, you, like I said, you can click the eye beside it to hide it. If you're not using it, that's fine. You can just delete it or remove it. I see now that my mic is not working, so now let's is a good chance for us to go through the settings. So give it a test, 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 and click settings. And this one here is pretty simple. We're just going to go down to the audio tab. In the global audio devices, in the mic auxiliary audio, it should be the first one that says mic auxiliary, not number two, three, or four. But it says default. This doesn't always work depending on what your computer is set to. So we just want to go down and find our microphone. You can pick the one with a NVIDIA RTX voice if you have something like that. But we're just going to go down and select the microphone generic one right here. And click apply and OK. And then give it a test to make sure it's showing up perfect. I can see it. That's great. That's all we need. At this point, you could hit go live and start streaming with just what we have now set up. If that's all you need it to get going and that's all you want it to have, you're ready to go live and it's just that simple. Next, we'll go over fine tuning the settings and adding an overlay. I'll start with the settings and work my way down the tabs covering some suggested settings. I'll be fast. So we'll click on settings and the first tab is the general tab. The only thing that we need in here that I suggest checking out is the source alignment snapping. In here, they're snapping and it's enabled. Now, 10 may be a problem if you're trying to line your camera up just a little bit from the edge. I'll grab the camera. And I wanted it, oh, just a little space, but it keeps snapping to the edge. So if you can't fine tune your settings enough, in the general tab, the first one, change your snapping to one. This will allow you to have a lot more granular movement. But if you want things to snap together, you can leave this at 10. This is just a suggestion. But every single time you make a change, definitely click that apply button. Next, we'll go down here to the streaming tab. This is where you would change your service. Uh, you can change your server, recommend it, disconnect your account, and where it would say connect account if you already haven't done that. It will say connect account here instead of disconnect. And this here will en enable a bandwidth test as well so that you can test your connection and Twitch chat add-ons. In here, I actually like checking the better TTV because it just adds some emotes in your chat window over here that I super like. And another thing is the ignore stream service settings. Now, I suggest leaving this unchecked unless you want to uh, play around with some more advanced settings with kilobytes and just what you can upload and download. But for now, we're just going to leave it unchecked. But just to know that that's there so that you can use a higher bitrate than 6,000, even though it's not suggested, you can actually go up. So if you're looking to test a little bit, that's the spot to do it. We're just going to hit apply here again so that the better TV TV takes effect. Now that we're going to go down here to the output tab, the first thing we're going to do is change the mode from simple. We do not want simple mode. Even though it looks really easy and everything's set up really nice, 
change this to advanced. I definitely suggest getting used to this advanced tab. It'll give you a lot more flexibility. And like I said, depends on what you're doing. It might be easier and simple, but I definitely suggest still use an advanced tab. You only have to set it up once, and if it works, it's good. First thing we're gonna go down here and check our encoder. If, Like I said, if you have an AMD video card, leave this X264. If you have a NVIDIA video card, you can set this to NVENC. We'll go through the X264 one first, as I find it's a, a good middle ground and a lot of people use it. The quality is better if you're doing a high bit rate, but that aside, we'll go down through here. We'll set up both. So we'll want the bitrate controlled at CBR, and we want to make sure that our bitrate is somewhere. We know we can handle 6,000 because of the test we watched go by, so we're going to use 4,000. I think this is a good middle ground, a good test. If you have no problems for about 5 to 7 streams, then try changing this here up later on. We're going to change the keyframes to 2, as that's suggested and required by Twitch. If you don't do this, you may get out of sync, so that's something to keep in mind. And we're going to keep this on very fast, and like I said, these things can be changed later on. If you're having no problems and you want to try higher settings, definitely play with them. We're going to change this one here to main and click apply. That's all we need for the streaming tab and that will work perfect. This should get you good results. And if it doesn't, like I said, you might need to turn your bitrate down or change your CPU usage up. If you're on X264 and playing games at the same time, very fast or faster will probably be my suggested settings depending on your hardware. Now, if you have a NVIDIA GPU, definitely change your encoder to the NVENC new. Go down here. It's the same thing, CRB. We'll stick with this 4000 as a middle ground, but if your internet's not good, just keep in mind that 2500 or better is fine. We'll set in our two keyframes here. We want to leave this a quality, and we want to leave this high. If you have any problems at all, come, come in here and try changing this down to performance first before anything else. So if you have any problems streaming, the first thing I would change is your preset down one just to make sure that it's not it and then your bitrate would be the second thing I try and we'll just click apply next if you're not just using this for streaming and you will be recording we'll jump over to the recording tab we'll go down here to where it says encoder we definitely don't want to use the stream encoder we're going to go x264 for recording but it doesn't matter for this here application at all if you're recording and you're not uploading you can have a much higher bit rate and it will depend on your hardware what you can have i suggest going with a 28000 bit rate if you're recording you do not need to set a key interval frames you don't need CBR, but I still suggest it, but you can go VBR, variable bit rate, and that'll be fine as well. As you're, when you're editing a video, your editing software will fix that. And then we should be good. We'll leave it on very fast. The encoder speed won't matter as much with so much more bit rate. And that should be good. If you want more than one audio, just click more than one audio track on here and click apply. Next tab is the audio tab. In here, I like setting this one here to 192 for my main audio out. And for my microphone, I like setting it to 320. So I would like to have it at its max so that my mic is always the best crisp quality that you can get. Click OK. Oops. I mean apply. And a quick replay buffer. If you want replay buffer, you can click enable here and it'll give you 20 seconds, etc, etc. We're not going to enable that because I don't use it. I have other things that will do that for me. Okay, we already had a look through the audio tab and we changed our microphone here, but your sample rate, just leave that at 48 kilohertz. That should be fine. And we're just going to go down to the video tab. Now your base canvas, I suggest leaving this exactly where it is. It should be set to your monitor's resolution. For output scaling, you should change this here to uh, 1280 by 720p. If you're playing anything with fast moving, FPS, shooting games, anything like that at all, anything that's moving fast, use the 720p. It won't, it won't blur, it won't look near as bad. If you use 1920 by 1080 in a, in a fast moving game, it's going to look like it's going to look junky. You might as well use 720p if you're moving fast. But if you're playing super slow moving games, something that's at a speed that you'd never notice it, then you could probably use 1920 by 1080 at 30 FPS, not 60 FPS. 60 FPS is too much bitrate to make 1920 by 1080 look good if you ever move your screen even just a little too fast. So keep that in mind, test these out if you want to, but this is definitely what I suggest going with. At 720p at 60 is what you want your output to be. We're gonna click apply again so those those take effect. We're not gonna touch on the hotkeys and in the advanced, there's only a few things in here that I would super like. Down here in the recording tab, because I don't wanna lose my files and I like recording in FLV or MKV, 
Right here is the automatic remux to MP4. So when you stop recording and you hit stop recording, it will automatically convert your video over to an MP4 for you. And I absolutely love this feature. It's something I use all of the time. And that's just where the setting is. Click it on, that'd be perfect. If you want to add a delay, there's that there as well. And automatic reconnect. You're, you can try the delay for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, etc. Those really aren't important settings. And that's all there is to it, really, for the settings. We can click apply. Our stream settings should be kind of set up so that we are able to stream at what we kind of know we have. We know our internet will handle 6,000 K bytes a second. So you should be set at this here point. And you already have everything tested. It should be good. Okay, well that's really all there is to it. You should be able to hit live from here, but we do want to add a few other things. We're going to add an overlay next, and we want stream elements bought in our chat for commands, and for chat to have fun. If you're looking for a little bit more advanced content, I do have videos covering a variety of settings. You should definitely check those out if you're looking to up your game just a little bit on the settings. These are just basic settings, like I said. You can go with these and run with them and they'll be fine, but you can definitely fine tune them and make them better. Depending on your hardware and setup, all your settings may be different. So it'd be definitely something to check out if you're finding all of this really easy so far. <laughs> I'm sorry about that after my shameless plug. Let's move on to adding stream elements bot to our stream. So let's just go over to streamelements.com. To do this, we can just Google search stream elements or go to streamelements.com. You need to log in with your Twitch. I'll log out here so everyone can see this. All right, if this is your first time logging in, to stream elements, it's going to ask you to connect with your Twitch. Don't connect it with your YouTube, Facebook, or if you're on Twitch, click connect it with Twitch. If it comes up with any other account, it will not work. So in here, load up streamelements.com and log in with your Twitch. So connect your Twitch account. This is going to ask you to authenticate your account and you will have to authenticate it and accept it. Next, you'll be brought to the dashboard. From here over on the side, it'll have bot settings and I'm going to part channel so that it'll say join. It should look like this with a little cry face, look sad. All you need to do is click join channel here. It should ask you to mod your bot. If not, you need to just go in here into your chat and slash, click okay, and slash mod stream elements and click okay. Perfect, stream elements is already a mod. There we go. We have that part set up now. Now that we have the bot turned on and we've seen it in our chat, we're gonna go down here to the loyalty settings. Go down here to loyalty, it'll open tabs. Click on loyalty settings. Click enable loyalty settings. You need this here to make some of your commands work with Twitch with the chat bot. So click enable and click save. This here information in here does not matter. It's just stream elements points. You can look over these if you want, but it doesn't matter what they're set to. Just click enable and save. You do not need to mess with this. Don't bother with it if you don't want to. If you feel like it, go over it after you enable and save it. If not, you'll end up having a few problems with your commands. So make sure that this is enabled and save. It's definitely highly suggested. You can change this here later if you want. You can always come back here. And this is mostly needed for the watch time command. So if you don't have this enabled when you start streaming, it won't actually keep track of the watch time. So when you do add that command or want that command later on, nobody's gonna have the real watch time. It'll only start once this is enabled. So that's a small uh, explanation. I shouldn't have taken so long in that. We'll, we'll just move on, just click save. And now let's add an overlay. So we'll click here up on streaming tools, go to overlay gallery because you don't have my overlays yet. If you click on my overlays, it'll show ones you already have, but you won't have any. So we'll just click on the overlay gallery. We're not gonna add a big crazy overlay. There is some here to pick from though. Definitely scroll through these. They're just one click install, copy paste, and it'll it, they'll all work like this and I'll show you how they're done. We'll go over to alerts. We want it so that when people subscribe or anything like that, they have an, a, a flash on screen for them. So my favorite one is to scroll down here a little bit and find royal red. So we'll just take a look down through here. Okay, and the brand new, it says royal red. All we need to do is give it a click. And it's gonna ask us to create a new overlay or add it to an existing one. If you don't have any existing overlays, just create a new one. So that's what we're gonna do here and click continue. It'll ask us to name it. We'll leave it stock for now so that we know what it is and click create my overlay. That's it, you're done. Copy this link right here, copy. Make sure it's copied. Go to my overlays, go back to OBS, click the plus sign, go up here to a browser source. We're gonna name this one here alerts. We didn't name our other ones because they say what they are. 
but we definitely want this one here not to say browser source in case we need it later on. So we're gonna leave this one here as alerts. We'll copy that URL, we'll, we'll paste that URL that we just copied, and we're gonna change this by 1920 by 1080. That's the size of the alert. If you make it smaller, it may cut the alert off. And that's it, you can scroll down and see what else is here, but that's all we need, we'll click okay. Now it's the full size, make sure it's at the top. When we go back into stream elements over here, we can go into edit our alerts. This is just a way we're gonna run a test right now. You can click on the emulate and a follower event. And it'll say that this here person followed. It will show you on your in your OBS, on your stream, and inside of your stream elements. All right, and red matches as our theme is why we picked that. You can pick other colors or any other ones. You can have these custom made. But until that time, this is a good tide me over there done. You have alerts, you have a little bit of an overlay. You'll be able to add different things and more complicated things later on, but I'm going to leave that for a longer video. So now you have alerts set up, a chat bot set up, some whole bunches of commands, and a basic overlay with your web camera. Now you can do like watch time, follow age, follow each. All these here should work stock with your stream elements bot. And that's just the basics. I have many videos covering things you can do and use to up your OBS game. I'll leave a few suggestion videos for what I think would be good to check out after you're all done with this. So if you're finding this here easy, I definitely have a few things that will, like you can add overlays to your camera, you can add borders, you can add, I have a lot of advanced tutorials that would be better suited if you're, you know your way around OBS. So at the end of this here video, you now should be ready. You just seen it's very simple to set up. There's a lot of things that might look complicated, but they're really not that complicated. It's very easy to set up and there's lots of things that you can add to it that are actually very easy to add. Like you just seen how I added alerts in three seconds. That was so fast, that was so fast. So after that's all done, you should be able to take a look at some more advanced stuff and definitely up your OBS game. I'll definitely leave some links in the descriptions for some videos I think you should check out next. Some a little bit more advanced stuff with maybe some things we've already touched on, just a little bit more in detail. And if you have any suggestions on things I could add or improve on, definitely let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one here, guys. That's all there is to it. This is my basic introductory. If, the, if you're new to OBS, I hope this year gets you set up and going. If so, definitely at yourself in the comments. I'll stop by, check you all out. I'd like to see how you guys ended up after this here video and just I want to see what you guys end up coming up with and what you design your stream as. So keep that in mind. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching.